In the not-so-distant future, precisely in the year 2040, Reito Mizuhara found himself in a rather chilling predicament. It all began when he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, forcing him into the frozen embrace of cryogenic sleep. For five long years, he remained in this icy slumber until a miracle worker named Mira Suo waved her magical wand, well, figuratively speaking, and cured him. Mira, with a sly grin on her face, proceeded to drop a bombshell on Reito. She explained that during his icy nap, a pesky little virus, aptly named the male killer or MK virus has decided to wreak havoc on the male population, leaving only Reito and a quartet of other immune dudes unscathed. Their mission, whether they like it or not, was to get busy and help humanity dodge the extinction bullet. Reito's eyes widen in disbelief as he tried to wrap his head around this wild concept. With newfound urgency, Reito ventured out into the world, only to find himself in a rather peculiar and, might I add, uncomfortable situation. Lust-crazed women attacked him left and right, making him wish he'd hit the snooze button on his cryogenic slumber. Thankfully, his sister, Mahiro, now a teenager, came to the rescue. She spilled the beans about their brother, Ryu, who had also fallen prey to the MK virus, but was frozen to save his life. As if that weren't enough, Reito's childhood friend, Eliza Tachibana, had gone MIA three years back. As if things couldn't get any weirder, Mira decided it was time for a little seduction game. However, Reito had none of it firmly insisting that his heart belonged to Eliza and no one else. Mira reluctantly agreed to help him find Eliza, but dropped the bombshell that, until then, a different lady would be knocking on his door every night. Well, isn't this quite the unexpected twist in the plot? Meanwhile, Kyoji Hino, one of the immune men, was living it up and even enjoying some late-night adventures with actress Rina Kitayama. Reito, Mahiro, and Mira decided to have a family dinner, or something resembling it, before Reito bumped into Hino. The guy couldn't resist teasing Reito for his hesitation at a sprinkle of salt to his already complicated situation. Then, out of the blue, Akane Ryuzuji staged a steamy ambush in the shower, leaving Reito flustered and faint, and carried him back to his room. With Mira having a sudden change of heart, Reito is now stuck with Akane and Suyamada as his unlikely roommates. It seems like the universe had decided to play its own version of matchmaking. Amidst all this chaos, the group decided to investigate Eliza's old laboratory. Inside Eliza's lab, Reito discovered that she had been working on a cure for the MK virus before her disappearance, sparking a newfound determination in him. That's not all. In a surprising twist, a council of women began to see Reito as a threat to their power, leading them to bring another man back to life, and things were about to get even more complicated. With Reito refusing to play along, Mira's position became precarious, and the women's council began to plot her removal. In a race against the clock, Reito found himself with a mere month to concoct the antidote before he was handed a less scientific task, clapping them cheeks. And to add a twist of irony to his already complicated life, Mira, his trusty attendant, was handed her pink slip, though she got to keep her room. In her place came Ria Katagiri, a woman who seemed to have a not-so-warm welcome party in store for him. The gang packed their bags and set off to Kamon City, ground zero for the MK virus outbreak. But before diving into the mystery, they took an unexpected dip, quite literally, as Reito reluctantly joined the girls for a hot spring soak. Talk about being in hot water. Their quest to interview Teniguchi, the widow of the virus's first victim, turned out to be a rather damp squib. She refused used to cooperate, instead mocking Reito for not embracing the clapping cheeks thing. Fast forward, Reito, Sui, and Maria embarked on a mission to investigate the abandoned hospital where the first victim had been treated, but their search yielded no results. Things took an intriguing turn as Reito examined the photo Taniguchi left behind, uncovering incomplete blueprints of the MK virus's design. Akane and Maria warned him about the mysterious disappearance of those working on the cure. It seemed like this rabbit hole went deeper than anyone had anticipated. Meanwhile, Kyoji Jihino, bored with his expanding harem, shifted his attention to Mahiro. His choice didn't sit well with Mahiro, who protested her age, but reluctantly agreed to a lunch date with Reito in tow. And just when you thought things couldn't get more complicated, it was revealed that the council had some plans of their own, with Akane's mother, Kihara, leading the charge. In a surprising twist, Ria confessed her love to Mira, only to face rejection. Reito found himself in a precarious position while distributing rations when a sniper took aim at him. But fear not, for Ria's sister stepped in, saving the day. At the much-anticipated lunch date, Mahiro turned down Hino, leaving him in a state of melancholy. But fear not, for he had his harem to keep him company and soothe his woes. As for Reito, Maria, Sui, and Akane's investigation led to a startling revelation about the missing doctor's connection to the abandoned hospital. A group of American mercenaries, led by the formidable Miss Pope and Miss Mansfield, set their sights on Reito, sending ripples of tension through the unfolding story. Meanwhile, within the confines of Shota's class, another surviving male, a girl receives a clan destined message from none other than Eliza herself, prompting her to spring their plan into action. Shota, on 
on the other hand, finds himself in a rather steamy situation in the girls' bath, where he succumbs to the charms of multiple girls. As the days passed, his escapades expanded to various locations. In a parallel narrative, Rato's group embarks on a daring expedition to the long-abandoned hospital. A fateful accident occurs here as Sui accidentally breaches a wall, revealing an unexpected air duct. Curiosity getting the better of them, they venture inside and stumble upon an underground laboratory. However, their arrival is met with hostility from the inhabitants, leading to a gruesome showdown. Their lives hang in the balance until a timely intervention by the mercenaries, led by the enigmatic Chloe, known as Miss Mansfield. A startling discovery awaits them, a ticking time bomb. Forced to flee in a helicopter, they barely escape the impending destruction of the laboratory. Miss Pope, representing the American mercenaries, confronts the council, leveling accusations about their involvement in the creation of the MK virus. The truth comes to light as their arrest becomes inevitable. But the biggest bombshell drops when Chloe unveils Elisa's affiliation with a group known as Izanami, a revelation that sends shockwaves through Reito and the group. While Shota indulges in his escapades, a determined Shion endeavors to break free from the school's clutches. Her escape attempt, however, is short-lived as she falls into Karen's grasp. Back in Shota's quarters, a surprising act of kindness unfolds as he covers a slumbering Erika with a blanket, but their tranquility is shattered by a series of explosions that rock the school. Shota finds himself in the hospital where Karen sheds light on the failed terrorist attempt to abduct him. Struck by Shota's protective instinct towards Erika, Karen unveils her ambitious goal of world domination. To his surprise, Shota agrees to join her cause. Meanwhile, Eliza's group has captured Zen Kinibuchi, a man in stasis. In a twist of fate, Hino is ordered to halt his mating activities until the terrorists are dealt with. Anger simmers as Chloe separates him from his female entourage. Akane discloses the impending imprisonment of Kihara and the other council members for their involvement in creating the MK virus. Reito helps Akane visit her mother, fostering a sense of camaraderie between them. In a bold move, Eliza hacks the airwaves to unveil Izanami's true nature. They claim that world leaders engineered the virus to exterminate men, envisioning a future inhabited solely by women. Izanami sees itself as a savior of men, demanding the release of those in stasis and those who have awakened. Reito's group unanimously decides that Chloe cannot be trusted, and escape becomes their only option. Their quest takes an unexpected turn when they unexpectedly cross paths with Shota and Karen in Reito's room. A flash Flashback reveals Karen's intervention, transforming Shota into an older version of himself without the need for glasses. In the present, they join forces with Chloe and reunite Maria with her sister, Chifuyu. Meanwhile, Reito attempts to convince Mira to escape with them, but her condition is set. She will only agree if he mates with her, a proposition he firmly declines. A sudden twist unfolds as Miss Pope attempts to arrest them, only to be thwarted by Rhea and Maria. Together, they make their escape finding refuge in Mahiru's shelter. In a bid to secure their future, Shota and Karen strike a deal with Chloe, allowing Shota to continue his amorous adventures and granting Karen dominion over Japan. On a separate journey, Reito's group boards a ship owned by Izanami, bound for Taiwan. However, Rhea and Mira choose to remain behind and are subsequently apprehended. Hino reaches out to Reito, wishing him luck but refusing to leave his imprisoned girls captives of Chloe's designs. Chloe, displaying her ruthless nature, subjects Miss Pope to a cruel punishment vowing to annihilate all men. As Shota concludes his passionate encounters with his female companions, his eyes fall upon Rina, imprisoned and ripe for conquest. Finally, the ship reaches its destination, reuniting Reito with the elusive Eliza. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. We really appreciate your support.